So for quite some time, I think it's been the case that anyone who's used the term liberal media in a sentence, you just kind of write them off. You don't take them serious because if you know anything about the mainstream news, you really don't have to do research. You just have to watch. It's easy to see that they have a pro-establishment and a pro-corporate bias. And since the Overton window in the country has shifted so far to the right, I think that mainstream media reflects that right-wing Overton window, which is why you see so many attacks against progressives like Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We just saw last week the attacks against Ilhan Omar. You see the attacks against progressive policies like a Green New Deal, Medicare for All. You see them criticizing Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on Morning Joe because she applauded Amazon decision to pull out of the New York deal because it was a horrible deal for New York City. So you see that there's this right-wing bias in the media, and I think it's actually more accurate to refer to it as conservative media. And there's a new story that came out that really demonstrates exactly why that's the case. And anyone who, like myself, thought it was more accurate to call it conservative media should feel vindicated because this story in Media Matters by Simon Malloy explains that CNN has now hired a Trump loyalist to lead all of its 2020 news coverage, which is problematic to say the least. So Simon explains, early on in the Trump administration, then Attorney General Jeff Sessions ran into a staffing problem as he took over the Justice Department. According to the Washington Post, Sessions very much wanted to hire longtime Republican political operative Sarah Isger as his chief spokeswoman, but she had criticized President Donald Trump repeatedly during the 2016 Republican primaries, and thus her prospects for a Justice Department job stalled. To break the logjam, the Post reported Isker paid Trump a cordial visit during which she told the president she was on board with his agenda and would be honored to serve him. The incident was noteworthy when the Post reported it last April because it demonstrated both the president's overriding need for loyalty and the willingness of Republican operatives to kiss Trump's ring as a means of career advancement. The story has taken on new relevance now that the same Sarah Isger, who personally expressed her loyalty to the sitting president, president has reportedly been hired as a political editor at CNN. In certain respects, this is a baffling move by CNN. According to Politico, which first broke the news, Isger will assume her editorial role at the network in March and will coordinate political coverage for the 2020 campaign. Isger is a career political operative. She's worked for Sessions, Senator Ted Cruz, the Republican National Committee, and Carly Fiorina's failed 2016 presidential campaign, but there is no indication that she has ever worked in any capacity as a journalist unless you count appearing as a pundit on cable news, which you should not. CNN has hired a person with zero experience producing news to oversee the production of news. Not only that, but the network has turned over its 2020 political coverage to a person who is more or less a walking conflict of interest. Politico notes that Isger, because of her employment history, will not play a role in covering the Department of Justice. How on earth can a cable news channel have a political editor who can't cover the Department of Justice? The workings of the Justice Department are at the heart of some of the most critically important political stories of the Trump era. The Russia investigation and the special counsel's office are going to be hugely important topics for the 2020 campaign, and Democratic candidates are likely going to spend considerable energy attacking DOJ policies that Isker defended, such as Sessions' legal assault on sanctuary laws for undocumented immigrants. It doesn't make much sense to have a political editor who has never worked in journalism, and it doesn't make any sense to have a political editor who is walled off from important stories that will be central to the very coverage she is supposed to be coordinating. And those problems rest uneasily atop issues that arise from Isker's partisan leanings and her loyalties to current and former high-ranking Trump officials. Isker's presence will lead to persistent, difficult-to-answer questions about how her politics and conflicts of interest are shaping the network's 2020 coverage. CNN's choice of a Trump administration veteran does, however, fit in with the network's fantastically self-defeating strategy of hiring pro-Trump mercenaries who shill on behalf of a president and administration that delight in demonizing CNN. The journalism industry does not lack for talented, experienced professionals who are desperate for work, but CNN opted to give this important job to a Jeff Sessions acolyte who has never worked as a journalist. 
that sure feels like the network sabotaging its own interests in order to send a conciliatory message to a political movement that will always view it as an enemy of the people. The story is so bad, it's one of those few instances where it speaks for itself and you really don't have to explain it. This is just a baffling move by CNN. It's against their own self-interest because why would you play ball with an administration who constantly refers to you as the enemy of the people? It makes no sense. And AOC put it best here. Sorry, didn't get the latest memo after 1,000 experienced plus qualified journalists of all stripes were let go without warning a few weeks ago and still looking for work. Are we still pretending that hires like these are evidence of a meritocracy? And that's exactly it. You fire people who are qualified. You hire someone who's not qualified, who's biased, who frankly is a political hack, and we're supposed to take you seriously as a serious news network, CNN? Really? Look, this is why people don't like CNN on both the left and the right, albeit for different reasons. The right thinks that there's this anti-Trump bias, when really it's a sensationalist bias, and Trump allows them to generate these sensationalist news stories, but the left sees it for what it actually is, a pro-corporate news outlet that is brazenly pro-establishment. And since Trump is the new establishment, since his loyalists are the establishment, then that's what they're going with. I mean, I, I'm trying to rationalize it, but there's really no way to rationalize this irrational decision. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's frankly stupid. So don't let people tell you that there's a liberal bias in the media and that the liberal, and that the media is liberal rather, because anyone who says that they should be disregarded because they're not serious actors. They're lying to you. What they're really saying is, I want the media to be more conservative because that's what it is. The media is conservative. CNN is conservative. And they may be socially liberal. They may, from time to time, do a pretty good story. They may have some reporters who are actually great and do objective work. But when you tune in to CNN, all you see is is hackiness, ranging from Chris Saliza and Harry Enten trying to rationalize absurd 2020 rankings, and then you hear idiots like Rick Santorum spouting off nonsense, and from time to time we'll have someone who will come on and actually tell the truth and be like a breath of fresh air, like Nina Turner. But that should be the norm, it shouldn't be something that is, you know, the exception. Manufacturing consent. You've got to read this book, by Noam Chomsky, because basically what it says is we all commend the media for being the fourth estate and for basically being the supposed fourth branch of government, an unofficial branch of government, because it's supposed to be a check on government power and government tyranny. But basically, the thesis of this book is that what ends up happening is you have a corporate media in the United States that serves the establishment's interests and is more loyal to the establishment than state-run media outlets we see around the world. That is a sad state of affairs, not just for media and having an educated populace, but it's a sad state of affairs for democracy, who refuses to speak truth to power and who just broadcasts the message of the powerful rather than challenging it. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.